we know who the next Conquest character is going to be, and that's going to be uh, Queen Amidala. I mean, that was kind of given away Monday the 11th because of CG accidentally posting, like, the teaser, I guess you want to call it. And everyone's like, where's the kit reveal? Well, here's the kit reveal. So we have the kit info on Queen Amidala. Obviously, she's going to be a leader to support Galactic Republic Light Side. Her kit, I've read through it already, has a lot of dots, uh, BS, heal over time, BS, protection over time, BS, all of which culminates in buffing up the team with increasing stat boost and all that fun stuff on top of the healing and all that. Um, the decoy is going to be a permanent taunt tank, uh, and whenever she dies, she makes um, things, she makes uh, Queen Amidala immune to damage immunity for two turns i think can't be dispelled and all that also infl inflicted with doubt uh on whoever killed her so that's kind of annoying as well um all of queen Amidala's stuff are going to be gak related mommies and then um yeah so the round out the faq bit the only faq bit they also have a qa form right there which i'm not gonna bother with apparently the two characters uh, probably put my, my hand up to my left but whatever the two characters are coming to bo bolster the queen Amidala team are going to be master qui-gon and then Padawan one obi-wan so not who i was really ex wanting to come but i'll take those two because you know they're both pretty iconic in keeping padme alive throughout the events of the phantom menace but enough of the jibber jabber let's get to the nitty gritty of her kit her basic is the S5 Heavy Blaster Pistol, which was like a really well-known Naboo Blaster Pistol. They were used by the Naboo Security Forces. Uh, they're quite a lot of fun using the EA Battlefront 2. But anyways, its text says you deal physical damage to target enemy and expose them for two turns, which can't be evaded if there is an active ally hand handmaiden decoy. I'm just going to call it a decoy because I'm not going to keep saying handmaiden. Uh, which, if the handmaiden is alive, you know, if the decoy is alive, then, you know, exposed is going to be guaranteed. And then all Galactic Republic allies gain three stacks of heal over time or protection over time for two turns, which will become very uh, pertinent and annoying as we get further in. If there was an active decoy ally, Galactic Republic allies recover 5% health protection. Yippee, on top of the heal over time crap they're gaining, they get to flat out recover health and protection. Uh, the first special is I am Queen Amidala. It has an Omicron with a three-turn cooldown. You're going to dispel all buffs on all enemies and deal physical damage to them. So it's an AoE buff cleanse and all allies gain accuracy up for two turns. If there's an active decoy ally, stagger target enemy for two turns, which can't be evaded or resisted. And then all uh, Galactic Republic allies gain defense up. And then three stacks of heal over time and protection over time for two turns. And this attack cannot be evaded. Ew. But... Again, more stacks of heal over time and protection over time. Not a biggest fan of this, but here we are. Anyways, while we are in Gak and in our Galactic Legend allies, th there's also a lot of ANSI, JMK, and CAT uh, callouts in this kit. So basically, you cannot be running CAT or the JMK under the uh, Queen Amidala lead. So get that immediately out of your mind. You're not going to be doing that. You're going to be using Master Qui-Gon, Padawan, Obi-Wan. Queen Amidala, probably Padme Amidala, and I don't know who the fifth is going to be yet. I haven't really thought about it. So, like I said, while there's no GLs and while we're in GAC, this attack ignores enemy protection. And then all eyes gain crit damage up, uh, and they also gain four stacks of heal over time and protection over time for two turns. Again, more protection over time and heal over time. And then all enemies are reflected with a stack of dot for each active Galactic Republic ally, speed down, and vulnerable for two turns. And then they have their cooldowns increased by one, which cannot be resisted. This bit kind of makes me wonder, um, I don't remember, is Bane immune to uh, cooldown increase? Let's look real quick, because I don't think he is, but don't remember. Let's see, rule of two, immune to taunt effects, and yeah, turn meter reduction, cooldown increase. So are those two going to balance out, or is Bane actually going to be completely immune to the cooldown increase? I guess we'll see. Who knows? We have three conquests of waiting to actually find out. And if there is an active decoy, these effects cannot be evaded. So, I don't know. Is it going to be avoided by Bane or not? Also, I don't know why I would be running Bane on defense anyways, but you might want to run him on offense to slaughter the Queen Amidala team. Who knows? Her second special is Ascension Gun. Um, you spell all debuffs on all allies, which is a cleanse. 
And then you call all non-GO Republic allies to assist, and they and Queen Amidala recover 25, 25, 20, not 25, 20% health protection. You remove 50% team from a target enemy, which cannot be resisted. Uh, and then if all allies are Galactic Republic and there's no Galactic uh, Legend or Scoundrel allies, so no GMK or no Cat, you can summon an allied handmaiden decoy to battle if the slot is available. So basically it's going to be like your first move you do with uh, Padme whenever you get to her turn. And then if the handmaiden decoy was already present, all, G all uh, GR allies gain defense up, speed up, tenacity up for two turns, and then the Galactic Republic non-tank allies gain stealth for two turns. Basically another way of forcing everyone to go after the uh, decoy. Now, we're going to get to the leadership first, because again, they keep fucking doing this. For the love of God, CG, put the leadership before the uniques. Anyways, her leadership is my places with my people, the Zeta Omicron, and it reads as follows. All allies have 20% defense and additional 15% max health protection. Okay, at the start of the battle, the all allies are Galactic Republic and there's no GLs. Uh, whenever an enemy attacks on a turn or inflicted with dot for a turn, which cannot be evaded or resisted, and you remove 10% TM from all enemies, which cannot, which also cannot be resisted. So a nice little nifty anti-imperial trooper kit uh, thing right there, because the TM removal would slow them down anyway. So dots would just slaughter them because you don't really have a cleanse with the imperial troopers outside of scout trooper anyways. So that's not really gonna. And also, you really want to run scout right now with a. Uh, Dark Trooper Mach Gideon. And at the start of each ally's turn, they gain 3% crit damage stacking. This is where the heal over time and protection over time stuff comes into effect. So 3% crit damage stacking for each stack of heal over time. Uh, they also get the 3% off in stacking for each uh, stack of protection over time they have, and that lasts until the end of their turn. So it's not until the end of the battle. So if it was to the end of the battle, I'd be saying this is completely broken and needs to be nerfed. But no, it's until the end of their turn, so it's somewhat manageable. Yes, the offense and this is going to be annoying along with the stacking crit damage, but it is what it is. And whenever an enemy critically hits an ally, that enemy loses 5% uh, crit damage, defense, and offense stacking to minus 50% until the end of the counter, which cannot be resisted. That is going to be annoying because losing crit damage, defense, and offense is extremely, extremely annoying, especially for a lot of dark side teams being, you know, offensively heavy, like geared towards kind of things, so... That is unfortunate. <coughs> Sorry, it's windy outside of my allergy all stirred up. Now, on to the Omicron bit. While in Grand Arena and there's no Galactic uh, Legend allies and all allies are Galactic Republic, uh, whenever an ally uses a special, they gain bonuses based on their role. Attackers will gain offense up for two turns and call a random ally to assist, dealing 20% more damage. The tank will recover 25% health protection, and supports and healers will gain protection up 50% stacking and speed up for three turns. So, more ways of keeping them uh, rolling, healing, damaging, and yada yada yada. Um, now for the first unique, which is Loyal Guard, which is the other Omicron, the third Omicron, and it's another Zeta one as well. Queen Amidala has uh, initial 20% max health protection and additional 10% crit damage and critical chance. And she uh, and then she allows all al well, not, not, blah, 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 not allow, she makes all allies immune to cooldown manipulation. So, I don't know if that, let's, I know, I know Bane can increase cooldowns and all that, but will that make it where he's, where it doesn't work, or will his work, and I don't, I don't understand CG code, so probably they'll be completely immune to it. I know with uh, Jedi Knight Cal, he can increase the cooldowns while he's on the team of his Jedi friends, so probably the same thing. And then whenever the decoy is summoned, she taunts until she's defeated, which cannot be dispelled or prevented. Uh, she's immune to all other buffs and debuffs, and she doesn't take turns, so she's literally just a, literally a mannequin <laughs> in there. And whenever she's defeated by an enemy, that enemy who, is def who defeated her is inflicted with doubt for two turns, which cannot be evaded or resisted. And then, this is where I said at the beginning of the video, Amidala gets the damage immunity. Uh, Queen Amidala takes a bonus turn, gains damage immunity, for two turns, which cannot be copied, dispelled, or prevented. So it's going to be like the one JMK gives out to his friends whenever he uses uh, his second special. Now, while the decoy is active, whenever a heal over time or protection over time expires on a Galactic Republic ally, they recover 5% health protection. You. 
whenever the heal over time protection over time expires on Queen Amidala, she gains a stack of a uh, stack of Queen's protection, which maxes out at sin, and that cannot be copied, spelled, or prevented until the end of the battle. Now, this is where it gets stupid-ish. For each stack of Queen's protection Queen Amidala has, all other Galactic Republic allies gain double those stats, and then the handman and decoy and immune city's effects, and they persist when decoy is defeated, but are dispelled whenever Queen Amidala is defeated. So the good thing is twofold. One, like it says, it's uh, the queen. The decoy is not going to be getting any of those stat boosts. When, I mean, it's not going to be doing anything. It's just going to be standing there, kind of like hit me, hit me, while everyone else attacks you. And then you're going to be losing all the stat bonuses anyways whenever Queen Amidala dies. So what Queen's protection gives is three percent max health and protection. An extra 5% uh, potency and tenacity. And then 5 speed per stack. So, let's see. Let's do some little quick math right real quick, okay? So we have 10 stacks of that. And that just time by itself. That'd be 30 extra max health protection. Uh, 50 extra 50% 50 extra potency and tenacity. And 50 extra speed. However, the Galactic Republic allies are getting double that. So it's 100 extra speed, 100 extra percent potency and tenacity. And then... An extra 60% max health protection. Ew. It's going to be very difficult to land debuffs on this team. And also outrun them potentially. Because we won't know the base stats of Queen Amidala until her conquest starts. Now while we're in Grand Arena and there is no Galactic Republic or Scoundrel allies. Again, no JMK or Cat. And all allies are Galactic Republic. All allies gain 25% crit damage, 40% in mastery, are immune to, and are immune to fear and uh, healing immunity. That is a very potent little end there being immune to fear because that really kind of just kills the Darth Revan or Darth Malgus kind of counters you could have done 40% mastery is also pretty buffy just because it's a pretty big chunk of mastery there healing immunity that's annoying as well uh whenever an ally is inflicted with a stack of uh, damage over time they dispel it and all allies gain a stack of healing over time or protection over time for two turns so you can't even use <laughs> If you use Lord Vader against this, you're basically just supercharging their damage output because you'll be giving them extra heal over time and protection over time for two turns. It's kind of ridiculous. And in that start of each encounter, you summon uh, a handmaiden decoy, so you don't even have to use the first special. Well, the first special, the second special, the Ascension Gun. You it literally just get summoned as soon as you are, uh, as soon as you load in. And then whenever an ally decoy is critically hit, all enemies are afflicted with potency down and tenacity down for two turns, which cannot be evaded. So, bleh, more debuffs. The second unique is the handmade decoy, which just covers it, which the decoy is a light side tank, Galactic Republic. It's basic as bodyguard. Uh, Galactic Republic allies recover 10% health protection. You grant advantage for a turn to a random enemy. Uh, who doesn't already have it, which cannot be evaded or resisted? Granting advantage. So... The way they're wording that makes it seem like either Kenobi or Qui-Gon is going to have something uh, based around enemies having an advantage potentially because why would you be wanting to grant advantage to an enemy if a future member of your team is not going to come in and just like kabosh it and you know and like uh, you know make them regret having advantage and also that's a pro probably a pretty stellar way of slowing down we're even dealing with SLKR potentially going against this team because, yeah, that team has advantage on it because of the buffs you get from Sith Trooper and General Hux and SLKR himself. But, you know, okay. But, um, yeah, overall, I don't know how to feel about it. The animations look decent, not gonna lie. I do like the way they designed Queen Amidala. Um, it's going to be a very defensive heavy team from the looks of it i am also kind of also wondering what master qui-gon jinn and padawan obi-wan kenobi are going to bring to the table but i guess that remains to be seen but yeah next conquest character is queen amidala and that'll be starting probably here in a couple days after this video goes up so yeah let me know what y'all think of her kit below. Um, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. I hope you have a good rest of your day.